Hey there, this is Teresa here talking real today on this session of Anchored in Abundance. Um, I have always said <laughs> for the 20, nearly 25 years um, since I started my company, Access Abundance, that I am the poster child for that old expression, you teach best what you most need to learn and practice yourself. And that's a bit of um, the spirit with which I come to you in today's session. Because I had a moment last night where I was reading some, some information, some statistics about the coronavirus epidemic here in the United States and the trends and where, when it may peak in different parts of the country where my family and loved ones live and just generally and I felt discouraged. For just a few minutes there, I just felt really helpless and hopeless and really discouraged. And underneath all of that, I'm now getting and, and scared. Maybe you've been feeling that already even if it's just been in short moments, maybe you haven't felt it yet. But if you're really honest and in tune with yourself, there's a good chance you will at some point before we emerge from all of this. In fact, there's a good chance you probably will more than once. Hey, Laura. And so I wanted to share with you what's been coming to me this morning around how I can respond to myself, how I can support myself when those not pleasant feelings are there for you. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to practice exactly what I practiced to support myself. So here's the thing. First of all, it is not about putting a happy face over those feelings. Oh, I'm not feeling discouraged. Oh no, I'm feeling great. That is so full of shit. <laughs> I just got to call it. That's so full of shit and it is not going to support you or empower you in any way, shape or form. And it's going to drain you of energy because if in truth inside you're feeling discouraged or helpless or hopeful or scared and you try and put a happy face on top of it, that takes a hell of a lot of energy, my friends, to try and stuff that and pretend it's not there. And if you're putting that stress, if you're using your energy for that, that's creating stress in your body and that's gonna deplete your immune system. That's not gonna support you physically, emotionally, in any way, shape, or form. We have to be real. So, and it's also why I created these series, this, this Anchored in Abundant series, which will be continuing into next week and probably beyond. So, three feelings I was feeling last night. Discouraged, helpless, like, like really, look at what is happening in Italy and New York and around the world. And, and I'm starting to hear from people I know who have family members and friends who are impacted. We're starting to get like, wow, what's happening and what is probably going to happen going forward. Helpless, hopeless. One study in the state of Minnesota, they, they did some statistics and what they're thinking is it's not going to peak in Minnesota until like early June. Now that's a good thing. They're doing that because it can, it can give them and their, hot, and their healthcare systems more time to be prepared and get ventilators and supplies they need. So I get it, but wow. Like I said, I felt discouraged, a little hopeless, a little helpless. And I was praying about that this morning. And I remembered three things. And this is what I feel prompted to share with you. First of all, courage is not about being strong and brave and a fighter all the time. Courage. 
The root word of courage comes from a French word, cur, care, C-O-E-U-R, I believe. And it means heart. It means heart. When we are filled with courage, we're filled with heart. And all the things that are in our heart are love, our compassion, our gentleness, our commitment to others, courage. So when we're discouraged, we've lost touch with what's in our heart. When we are feeling discouraged, we need to have, we need to go into our heart again. <laughs> Maybe when we don't want to and feel what's there, tap into the love that's there. If there wasn't love in our hearts, we wouldn't be feeling scared and discouraged and hopeless and helpless. There's love for ourselves, for the people we love, for humanity, for the healthcare providers. We have to tap into our hearts and the love and the strength and the power that's here in our hearts. And yes, there's also sadness and sorrow and all of that, but courage is about being willing to feel all of that, stand in that, open our hearts in the midst of this time. That's how we find courage. Now, how do we do that? I'm getting there. So when we're discouraged, we need to encourage ourselves and each others. And that's not platitudes or happy face. That's about helping each other connect to our hearts and the love that we that is there for all of us in grief. Grief is only there because love was there before it. We don't grieve something we don't love. So in our hearts is the love. And that's what we have to tap into when we feel discouraged. Let's go back to the love. Go into the love. Encourage ourselves. And helpless. Helpless is the feeling we have when we feel like there's nothing we can do. And this morning, it was quite clear for me, when I'm feeling helpless, dropping into my heart, my courage in the face of all this, huh? how can I flip it? How can I be helpful? Feeling helpless is about seeing all that we can't do. Choosing to be helpful. How can I be helpful? How am I being helpful focuses on what we can. And hopeless. Hopeless is like, that's a sucky feeling. Hopeless is when you think, when some part of you is afraid or thinks that we're never going to get through this. There's, there's nothing to look forward to. There's nothing to believe in. There's nothing to hope for. It's like, well, in my Christian tradition, where we believe that Jesus, the human being known as the Christ, died on a cross, and three days later was risen from the dead, that there was after death, there comes new life. To be hopeless means like we think it ends at the death and there's nothing after that. To be hopeless is to just see the death, see the sorrow, see the pain, see the problem, see the this, and to not trust or believe that something new and good can emerge from that. Now, on our own, we can't necessarily see it or know it. But that's why I've been saying this is a time when we need to anchor ourselves in abundance. Not abundance as we think of it as having lots of money or material possessions, but abundance, my definition, 
is that knowing we are part of something bigger than us. There's something bigger going on here. And that's something bigger that I call God and you may call universe or spirit or life force energy, the creator of all, is always, always moving towards love, goodness, beauty, life, healing. Now, when we're feeling hopeless, we need to practice connecting with that something bigger, remembering that we're part of something bigger. And we can look for those things that remind us of that and from that give us hope. Like the daffodils that outside of our back door that are about this tall right now. Wow. Here in the midst when so much of the life we know it has been falling apart. Wow. Daffodils are still emerging from the, the winter darkness and soil. Ha. Huh. How did that happen? Why is it that daffodils and robins and my beloved cranes and trees haven't stopped <laughs> like we have? Because they're there to remind us that we're part of something bigger. And in that, we can have hope <laughs> and we can tap into our hearts and our courage and we can be helpful. And it's never about shutting those feelings down and it's never about putting on a happy face. It's always about anchoring ourselves in the truth of abundance, of new life, always following death, of remembering we're part of something bigger. And the simplest and best way, and it is exactly what I did last night, is to actually stop, make yourself comfortable, and join me now in just taking some long, slow, deep breaths. You might want to close your eyes. And as you breathe in, remember that that oxygen was not something that you had to create. <laughs> Nor has it gone away because we're in this pandemic crisis again. A sign we're part of something bigger. Breathe it in, allow it to give you life. Let it fill your heart with life. And then exhale that life energy out into the world. Helpful. And do it again. Last night when I was feeling discouraged, when I was feeling that momentary helpless and hopeless, I had to connect with something bigger. I had to remind myself that there's something bigger going on. I had to anchor myself in that, that it's not all up to me. And I had to open my heart. So as you're breathing here right now, breathing in that gift of life, let it fill your heart with life, connect you with the love that is there. And as you exhale, imagine sending that out into the world to people who are suffering, who are feeling discouraged, to the healthcare workers, to the leaders, to the people who are grieving the loss of people they've loved. Have the courage to feel all of that and still breathe in the life that's here for you and for me. And to send that energy out into the world breath by breath and in actions that you can take, words you can share, people you can reach out to, 
places you can safely volunteer. And look around with signs of hope and love and courage, the signs of new life that are wanting to emerge. And remember, we are part of something bigger than what's going on. Something more powerful, more loving, more generous, more creative, more resourceful. That I call God and you may use another name for. Anchor yourself in that truth. Trust in the life that always follows death. Connect with your heart, open your heart, and be helpful in whatever ways you can. Blessings on your weekend. Thank you for being here. Please let me know how and if this supported you. And of course, if you think it might be helpful or encouraging for someone you know or your Facebook friends, please do share it with them. Be safe, be well, my friends. Thanks for joining me, Laura. Bye.